call the January 26th meeting of the Laconia Police Commission to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call for the commissioners present. Uh, Commissioner Davis? Here. Commissioner Mello? Here. Commissioner Woodham is here. We have a quorum, so we can proceed with. I'd like to recognize Chief Canfield at the table and Administrative Assistant Laurie Marsh. We will proceed with personnel matters, commendations, and awards. Chief Canfield? Nothing. Resignations and retirement? Nothing. Chief Canfield, nothing. Promotions and classification changes? Chief and Canfield? Nothing under that. Moving on to command staff reports. Support division, Chief Canfield? Uh, so the support division has been busy um, to include detectives. Um, they've been working to outfit um, the latest command post vehicle that we uh, got through New Hampshire Department of Homeland Security. So they're working with the company to uh, continue with the, the build of that, which it was the delivery was supposed to be this spring. It's looking like it's going to be later in the summer, maybe even possibly the fall due to supply issues. Um, they've also been working to get the three cruisers that were approved through capital improvement last year uh, onto the street. We took delivery of these in uh, late November and December. Uh, so they've been working with the outfitters and like everything getting supplies has been difficult but they're almost uh, completely outfitted and will be on the road shortly. Um, they also uh, worked on a Department of Justice um, Substance Abuse Reduction Initiative grant which was uh, formerly known as the Granite Shield. Um, this goes directly to overtime money to combat um, uh, dr drug initiatives throughout the city. So. Um, high intensity drug enforcement areas um, in the amount of $45,000. Uh, so that was awarded by the Department of Justice uh, recently and it was approved uh, by city council uh, last Monday night. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the COSAP grant, which is the Comprehensive Opioid uh, Abuse Site-Based Program Grant, um, we applied for this three years in a row. This is the third year that we applied for it. Um, the grant was actually written by the Department of Justice. Um, this stems back to three years ago when they uh, took a lot of interest in the, uh, the PET program that uh, Detective Adams uh, has been working on, I think, gosh, probably around seven years at this point. Um, they took a, a lot of interest in that and expressed interest in bringing the program statewide. Uh, so three years ago, we had a meeting with them. They wanted to write this grant in order to pay for uh, Eric's salary uh, to bring it statewide and teach other police departments. So uh, they were successful in writing the grant this year um, and they have selected a handful of other departments, I think it's like seven or eight departments throughout the state um, to be part of the initial wave of this program. Um, but this grant was uh, just about $1.2 million. Um, it will pay for Eric's salary um, so he can go be a statewide coordinator to do this program. Um, the benefit to us in Laconia is that it's going to fund two additional um, police officer positions as well as backfill Eric's position. So um, it'll give us additional staffing to uh, work on these same types of issues here in Laconia. Um, Eric will be working out of the police department here in Laconia um, by his choice. So he'll be based out of our police department, which will um, enable him to stay here as a resource for not only the person that takes his position, but also uh, to stay involved with a lot of the boards and committees and uh, statewide work that he's done. So um, certainly really big news and uh, very glad to have the support of the police commission and the city council um, on that initiative. Because I think, um, you know, in, in these, these times of police and uh, particularly these types of issues, uh, I think this, this program has certainly brought light to um, non-traditional methods of policing and, and, and certainly has seen a lot of results here. So um, 
as I'll talk about later on, the drug problem continues to be an issue with the fentanyl, the heroin, um, and this program is certainly a big benefit to that. So they've been uh, busy working on that grant as well. So that's it for support. When would that take effect? Um, the grant money um, has been approved. Uh, we kind of gave the Attorney General's office a tentative date of six months, so sometime in June that we would make Eric available uh, to at least start with that program. Um, I would anticipate before then that we would, he would probably preliminarily meet, have some I informational meetings, um, but I wanted to, before we backfill the position, wanted to be able to at least get some uh, people hired in, in the pipeline to replace those positions before stripping them from patrol. So tentatively six months. And Eric's gonna be coming in shortly to just give a little overview of the program, so. Operations Division, Chief. Um, operations uh, has been busy as always. They've had a number of uh, good drug arrests, uh, a lot of good patrol activity uh, in addition to uh, traffic enforcement uh, numbers. Um, they've been actively recruiting for a uh, full-time dispatcher to uh, fill an open position there. Um, in addition, the uh, special events committee meetings have uh, begun, so that means that motorcycle week planning has begun as well. So that agenda has uh, picked up uh, numbers of applications, so they'll be looking to move that into uh, the spring and, and uh, early summer. Questions? Moving on to commission action, acceptance of the minutes of the previous Sir. meeting. Make a motion we accept the meeting. Uh, make a motion we accept the me minutes of the last meeting. Last meeting. Second. Second. A uh, motion made by Commissioner Mello, seconded by Commissioner Davis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes unanimously. The meeting minutes of December 8th were accepted as distributed. Review of monthly activity reports. Department monthly highlights. Chief Canfield. So for the month of December, we responded a total of 1,638 calls for service, which was up um, from the previous month by uh, just about half a percent. Uh, investigated 241 criminal uh, offenses, clearing 179 of those with uh, arrests, making a total of 92 physical custody arrests. Um, took 22 people into uh, Custody for intoxication responded to a total of 23 domestic disturbance calls, 64 other disturbance calls, seven suicidal subjects, uh, investigated four violation restraining orders, and uh, LPD volunteers uh, volunteered a total of 17 hours for the month, along with the victim services unit, which uh, volunteered 12 hours for the month. So certainly remains busy. Questions, moving on to criminal investigative unit statistics, Chief Canfield. For the month of December, they took on uh, tw eight, 18 uh, new initial cases, conducted 18 follow-ups on other cases, uh, initiated 19 different search warrants, arrest warrants, or juvenile petitions, uh, conducted 21 sex offender registrations, uh, investigated two computer-related crimes, uh, one background investigation, six drug intel sheets, uh, one polygraph examination, and then um, did 288 hours of training, which was uh, for the entire detective unit to uh, take a crime scene uh, school mm -hmm. for a week. So, And then in addition, they did uh, a total of 50 body-worn uh, camera redactions for court preparation. Budget printouts, Chief Canfield. Uh, budget is on track. We're currently at 43.46% um, of the budget spent, and we're at 44.23% through the year. So we're trending uh, about a percent under budget. Historically, you've always had a good hand on the budget. We have. I mean, we certainly scrutinize our spending and, and, and keep it in line. Um, and do as much as possible with it. Okay, moving on.
on to monthly traffic statistics, Chief Canfield. Uh, for the uh, month of December, we issued a total of 62 parking tickets, uh, 12 of, I'm sorry, five of which were for left wheel to curb, four of which were for parking on the sidewalk, one for blocking an alley or a driveway, one for uh, parking in a space not designated, 51 for parking within the snow removal period. Um, investigated a total of 54 motor vehicle accidents, six of which were with injury, one of which was a fatal accident. Um, number one location or cause for accidents was uh, for unsafe backing, followed by the category of other. Number one location for motor vehicle accidents was on Union Avenue. And then we stopped a total of 576 motor vehicle stops, uh, issued 28 motor vehicle summonses, and 470 or 407 uh, motor vehicle warnings. Questions? Moving on to monthly fleet report. Uh, nothing on the monthly fleet report. This might be a good place to introduce. Perfect. Take the bow and joke them up. <laughs> Hello, commissioners. Hello. How are you? Good. Great. Good. <coughs> so, um, do you want me to just talk a little bit about yeah just if you could just give an update in the in rundown on your current position and how that transition is going to happen and sure um, some of, maybe some of the duties that you'll be taking on yeah so um, we uh, we got the grant uh, and so my position now is going to shift to more of the um, coordination role with um, seven other police departments and so um, I actually will be staying at the PD. Um, so the it was the Department of Justice that applied for the grant. Uh, and um, I did request and had a conversation with the chief quite a while back if we got the grant, if I could stay here and not be placed down in Concord. Um, this way it gives me an opportunity to kind of stay with what's going on in the city um, and really keep up with um, helping the person that will take my position um, and, uh, and then also I'm going to still stay involved with some of the local organizations that I'm already part of. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> so as far as I think the way things will work for, for us, um, is, you know, we, uh, will have someone, um, from the PD within that will obviously apply for, uh, the position, the role, uh, of the the pet detective and um, so that position will do basically what I do um, and so over the years I'm, I know you commissioner have been around long enough uh, and you commissioner Mello have been around long enough to to see that when my position started it was more of a direct contact right so I was directly dealing with the families dealing with the individuals um, that struggle and uh, and so since then, um, we've acquired so many more resources here, you know, in the city, uh, which is amazing, right? Uh, it's, it's helped a lot of people in the community. It's mended a lot of families in the community. Um, and so also, uh, I can tell you there's a lot of individuals that I have worked with that are now contributing back to uh, society by working, you know, paying taxes and things like that. And so... Um, with, uh, you know, with this position, um, it's morphed into more of um, dealing with the community organizations, right? Keeping those communities um, engaged with the police department, uh, learning more about what other services that are being provided, dealing with issues with, you know, homelessness, um, you know, and, uh, and, and other issues surrounding um, addiction and mental health. Uh, and so the position that I, that we, we want to put in place of me is really going to be, I think, 
doing more of the directed service. So uh, dealing more with those individuals um, as well, uh, but also trying to maintain some of the things that I do. I plan on keeping some of the things that I already have going on, like some of the boards that I sit on, uh, some of the committees that I sit on. Um, what will happen is the officer that takes my spot will kind of be like a fill-in. We'll know what's going on with those committees, things like that. Um, that way they can really work on some of the issues that the chief and I have discussed, like um, encampments, right? So we have a lot of concerns about encampments. Um, and, uh, you know, last thing that, that we want to see in the middle of winter is obviously going to someone that's frozen to death, <coughs> right? So trying to figure out how we can create a balance with some of those encampments that happen um, and uh, instead of just pushing them from one side, right, to the other. So uh, there'll be things that they deal with like that. And then the other thing is the, the new re rapid response uh, team. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's uh, the state has implemented um, what they call rapid response or the mobile crisis units. So they've been active for a while in Manchester, Nashua, places like that, uh, Concord. And so Lakes Region Mental Health actually just uh, got theirs up and running January 1st. And so um, I've already utilized it uh, in a client that I was working with. Um, uh, there's some pros and cons to it that are getting worked out with Lakes Region Mental Health, uh, but the, the gist of it is they have a team that the PD will utilize uh, a, a call number, um, and uh, the, way it, the way it works right now and the way it's set up is basically it's a, it's a 911 dispatch, but yet it's for mental health crisis alone, right? And so um, you call that number, they connect you with an individual, that, that process goes fairly fast, right? And uh, it's all, it all stems around um, an officer that goes to a call, uh, identifies that there is something going on with mental health here, and how do we best serve that individual instead of just putting handcuffs on them and dragging them up to the ER, right? Um, and so <clears throat> they make the call, that individual does a quick assessment over the phone with the officer and or if they can put the person on the phone if they're not in major crisis. Um, and then uh, they have a conversation with them. And sometimes it's s something as simple as them setting up an appointment to meet with the individual like in an hour or so, um, or, the, uh, or they actually come out. And so the one that I did, um, the whole team actually came out, which was really cool. Uh, they did an assessment right there on in the parking lot uh, it worked great. There was someone that um, utilized Lakes Region Mental Health Services at one point um, and, uh, and um, really was able to connect with that individual on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. Uh, and that person went voluntary up to the hospital and now they're down at New Hampshire Hospital getting treatment that they needed. So um, it does work. It's, uh, and, um, so there'll be things like that, right? And then the other part, right? So the other part is obviously our narcotics stuff that's going on in the city, right? Because granted, you know, I work more directly with trying to get people help, but the fact of the matter is we have drug trafficking, right? We have drugs in the city that we need to get the hell out of here. So it's a matter of what do we do, right? So part of that position and that time will also be working with our narcotics detectives, trying to get them... Um, up to speed uh, and the more officers that we can have trained in doing things like surveillance and other drug work and stuff like that um, the better off we'll be when it comes that they're out on the road themselves um, so yeah so that's kind of like the brief overview the other part that uh, you know the chief and I had, had talked about um, was uh, utilizing one of the other positions um, and we're not really sure it's totally up to the chief how this is gonna work but I ran an idea of hey what if we had an officer that not only had was doing my position, but yet another officer that worked very directly with the mobile crisis unit, right? So I went to uh, a week-long training uh, a couple weeks back, um, CIT training, and, uh, and it's put on by NAMI. And basically, it certifies you to actually be an officer that is called while you're on shift to actually directly go to these calls that are identified with mental health and actually trained in dealing with someone that 
that deals with it, you know, that, that struggles with it. Um, and so all officers, I talked to the chief about it. Um, we definitely want to get all of our officers trained in it. Uh, it's a very important training. Um, and it's nice to see, uh, that, um, you know, law enforcement is, is moving towards, um, learning more about how to handle with someone, uh, and that's in a crisis. Um, so I think that's pretty much the overview. Uh, if there's anything I left out chief, um, no, I, th I think that covers it very well. Okay. Do any of you have any questions? questions? Sure. This was um, started back in 2019. Is that right? Three years ago, Three I think. Years I, ago. Which my program? No, the the, um, program? the, the grant that, that we got. So. Yes. Yeah, so we. Yeah. So this is it's the. Through this was now, the right? third year that we applied for it. Yep. 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 So three times a charm. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're just going to backfill somebody will backfill your position that's already on staff. Yes. That's the intent. Yep. Correct. And then, yep. um, then the other new positions, would they be? They would probably be transferred from within, within. and then we would hire to backfill their positions. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Um, because someone with the institutional knowledge of the police department in the, in, in the city of Laconia and, and all that kind of stuff, yep. that's really kind of a specialized position. So. Yeah. Would that um, be a, uh, another, a separate division of its own? We haven't really hammered the framework of that out yet. No exactly how they're going to fall um, <clears throat> those were our pre preliminary ideas you know we they probably won't be up and running until I think the idea is to get Eric transferred probably somewhere in the June time frame um, but I wouldn't anticipate them being transferred any sooner than that but probably most likely later yeah yeah I mean to be honest with you Commissioner um, you know I, I would kind of look at this as um, by the time this three-year grants up we would have a a good handle on having those positions in place and a good working knowledge of them so that they can present you know to you guys what they're doing and, and city council as well on on what all that looks like the, the reason why we're getting those two additional positions is that when the Department of Justice came to us and said hey we want Eric to bring this program you know to other departments and eventually make it statewide we said well that's great we know that Eric's done a really good job with this program and he's built it from the ground up this program was unique it was never done anywhere else. Um, but there was no benefit to us for Eric teaching people from Manchester to institute right. this program in, in Manchester. It doesn't do anything for Laconia. So we kind of took the stance of, that's great, we don't mind doing that and helping out with other departments, but what's it do for us? And they said, well, what, what would it take? Um, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, that's where I came back. And we said, right. we need to do more focus here. We want to do other kind of work. You know, we haven't solved the drug crisis. I don't know if we'll ever solve it, but we, right can make a bigger impact if we can dedicate a couple more people to it. And um, they were able to work that into the grant and, and it was approved successfully. So yeah, it's a three, three year grant, I think, right? Today. It's three years. Um, you know, I, I think in talking with the, the people from the Department of Justice, um, they're hopeful that there may be a chance to renew the grant at the end of three years to extend it. Yep. Um, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we, when we get to it. So what are the other seven departments in the state? Yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> Belmont. Belmont's one of them. Um, so Belmont, Berlin, Londonderry, Merrimack, um, Manchester, Claremont, and there's one more. No, that's all right. Gosh, I was gonna bring. I was gonna bring a copy of the report with me too. <laughs> Salem or Nashville wasn't in there. No, we tried to get one, <clears throat> basically one in each county. Oh, I see. <clears throat> and so um, <clears throat> the other addition was uh, Laconia because basically we have to, I have to train someone to be in my spot, right? Okay. So, um, but it's nice because I, I, the reason, you know, part of the reason I wanted to stay in Laconia was one, it's my home and two, it's uh, Belmont, right? So to get Belmont up and running can be can be actually a lot quicker because I can actually have their officer come over to Laconia. And while I'm training the one for our position, I can train them as well at the same time, right? So I'm, you know, killing two birds with one stone. So it's like, it's, a, it's, it's much easier. Um, and I know the Belmont community well enough to know that, you know, what are the things that we can do. Besides, Belmont utilizes a lot of the services that Laconia does. So it's really not going to be that difficult to, to implement over there. Um, it's the outer, you know, it's the other PDs that are um, 
going to take a little bit more time to, to implement. And if you think about it, the grant's already, I think it's September 30th, 2023 or 2024, 20, I can't remember if it's, um, <coughs> I think it was three years from, so it was three years from September 30th, I think is the way they went back. So hopefully in, in, in talking with Rhonda, I think we'll be able to extend it um, for a period of time so we get the full year three years because it was the federal government obviously that, that pushed it back. We should have known um, the end of September or beginning of September, uh, middle of September is when we should have known if we got the grant and then that process should have been gone through and then we, we should have technically started uh, January 1 is the way it was initially supposed to be but obviously with all the things that have been going on with the federal government and getting their grants out and stuff um, <clears throat> they had uh, Rhonda was telling me the lady at the AG's office <clears throat> it was like December or something and she said that they had till December 31st technically and they had like 200 and something grants just for that one grant that they hadn't even looked at yet so so we were pretty fortunate to <laughs> to get it before you know, December 31st, so, yeah. Good luck. Great. Sounds pretty exciting. Thank so. you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. He has to Great. go to Berlin. He needs an extra six months, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, well, it was funny. I was telling the, the um, I think I was telling you guys that it was kind of interesting. It's like full circle for me. So I used to buy drugs, you know, when I worked undercover in, uh, Berlin. So myself and Scott Roy, some of you remember Scott Roy, oh, yeah. uh, him and I would be the ones that would go up and do the UCs for <coughs> Berlin and Gorham and that area. And then they'd come down and do the UCs here. So yeah, so I spent my fair, fair share in Berlin. <laughs> I had to learn French to go up there. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I just have to say that, you know, this this is a good opportunity for, for Laconia. I think Laconia is going to benefit from it, but um, certainly for the department as far as being able to spread this program to other, other agencies throughout the state. But it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for all the work that Eric's put in over the last seven years yep. yeah. of, of doing this. It was built from the ground up, and um, Eric was definitely the right, the right guy for it because he did, he's built it from, from, from nothing. So this is all attributed to the work Eric's done, and he's done a great job. So Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, can I make, I know it's out of order, but I said the other night, first I want to tell you, everything to do with this and the other grant was unanimously voted by the, strongly unanimously voted by the council. The other thing I want to say, and I said some of it to them the other night, but it needs repeating, maybe not to you guys, but to the rest of the city. This young man has done a, a brilliant job. I think we all recognize that. Let's don't forget a police chief who's allowed it to happen mm. and a commission <coughs> that has supported it. And from a city council perspective, he deserves 100% support. You guys deserve 99% support for what you've done to make this work. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of Laconia PD. I'm so proud of Laconia PD. I, I can't express enough how strongly I feel. I made the comment the other night, and I'll repeat it. I come from, knuck, from the knuckle-dragger period of law enforcement. <laughs> this is all new to me. I've never seen this stuff. But I'm really <coughs> impressed with it. And I tried very hard to express that the other night, make the other councils know this is, this is important. Good stuff. Yeah. Sorry to. No, and I, you know, I, that's because very well said, and I think uh, <clears throat> that your enthusiasm that you can tell. Yep. You, know, you love what you do. Oh, yeah. And oh, definitely. what you do <laughs> does a lot of good. Yeah. And but, it, and it, I, I mean, you know, starting with, you know, you guys and, and, and the city council and Chief Adams, and then, um, you know, Chief Canfield has <laughs> been more than supportive. So it's been. For me, it's been great. Like, I mean, he could have walked in day one and said, you know, we're going to put you back in patrol and you can utilize the information that you've taken and, 
you know, you can go out and stop cars and, and answer calls like that. Um, but he didn't, you know, so, um, you know, and I knew that I had to work hard to prove to him that, you know, I, that this program, right, and, and, and what we're doing uh, is benefiting our patrol officers out on the street dealing with mm -hmm. individuals. So, um, yeah. I'd like, to, I'd like to say something. Back the year before last, Eric got an award from the Alps from the, Nas from the national organization for the work he does. He got an award from them. Him Did and another guy. I was ticked because the other guy got it too. <laughs> Number one as far as I'm concerned. That's true. Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, all right. Thank I you for what you hair. do. Thank right. you. All right. Thanks. Thank you all. Moving on to a monthly fleet report. Uh, nothing on the fleet report. Okay. And then correspondence to and from the department. If you can. Uh, we had a thank you letter for a, uh, a ride along that uh, rode along with Officer Goodhart uh, complimenting her and uh, showing the appreciation for what um, she, she does as a police officer and what the department does. So nice, nice accolades. All right, chief's report. Um, so, as part of the uh, last year's goals, uh, the one of the goals was to better train our, our detectives um, in crime scene response. So, um, they attended the first of a series of different uh, major crime uh, courses. Uh, so they they completed that in um, early December, and they'll be continuing to uh, move forward with that uh, coming into this year. Uh, 2021 uh, overdose statistics, we had a total of 75 overdoses, uh, 14 of those were uh, suspected overdose deaths, um, which is which is a lot a lot higher than last year. So um, like I said earlier, the, the, the number of overdose deaths and the number of overdoses we're going to uh, is certainly very concerning and very high um, when we look at 14 of them uh, died last year. So. Um, having those additional resources will, will help in that category for sure. Um, working on budget preparation for um, the anticipated uh, budget presentation in uh, the springtime, um, as well as uh, we'll be entering into uh, contract negotiations. Um, at some point in February, we'll, we'll begin those the, the negotiation process as the, uh, the union contract ends uh, June 30th. Um, Lastly, we have, uh, we're nearing completion of uh, two background investigations uh, for uh, patrol officers um, with an anticipated start date for an in-house academy of February 7th for one of those um, positions. The other one won't be able to start until um, probably June because he's uh, a senior in a college this year. Um, he was one of our uh, uh, community resource <coughs> officers. So as long as his background pans out, then he'll be um, looking to come on in June, that will bring us full staff. So, um, certainly a good thing. And that's it. Old business. Nothing. New business. Nothing. Other business. <laughs> Nothing. Citizen comments. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I want to repeat what I said a minute ago, and that is that both of the votes Monday night were enthusiastically uh, unanimous votes, and I think that's important. Given that some members concern, are concerned about, you know, expenses and particularly new positions and stuff, you have to justify them. I think, John, uh, the whole, I think the Chief's done a brilliant job of of doing that. Um, I, I uh, wanted to, to, to bring to the Commission's attention my concern. I've spoken to the Chief about parking enforcement and particularly the equipment to do it. To my horror, he tells me, uh, and I've since 
researched it, uh, that you can't chalk tires anymore. <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess that goes back to the old knuckle dragger days, but <laughs> apparently you can't do that anymore. So uh, apparently you need equipment to do it now, and <coughs> it's not cheap, at least as I understand it. Uh, I want you to know I will support vociferously uh, the, the, the idea of equipment. I hope the commission will see that as an important part of what you submit this year for, for budget. Frankly, I'm, I'd like to try and get something done before even the end of this fiscal year. Uh, and I'll be checking with the chief about where he's at budgetarily and whether we might be able, and the city manager, see whether we might find the funds to at least start with one piece of equipment. Uh, because, and I want to make this, um, I hasten to say this is my opinion, but I think it's based on having sat around this table and listened not only to city council discussions, but I'm the city council representative to the planning board, and I hear parking enforcement, parking enforcement, parking <coughs> enforcement. Um, we hear it around the city. Yeah, the guy down the street from me always parks on the curb and the, or parks on the grass. Or, uh, well, Monday night we had somebody uh, had an issue about North Street um, and the curve there uh, as you're going up the hill on North Street. Uh, those sort of things you hear a lot. So I'm hoping to encourage additional parking enforcement. I know it's not a glamorous part of law enforcement, but it's a glamorous part of living in a city you, you want to live in and where things are, are uh, kept in order. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that, that uh, I, I know the chief has made an effort and it's obvious looking at the stats that we're doing more now than we did a year or two ago, particularly before we got the two traffic positions approved. Um, and the day may come when we'll need some more of those. And I, I'll, I may be working on that before too much longer. But um, I, I really want in, to ask the commission to encourage, uh, uh, you know, parking enforcement citywide. But the second part of that is down here. Um, I think the chief's going to need a parking enforcement officer. I we haven't talked recently about it, but uh, I think, and, and he hasn't asked. We've discussed it, but it's not like he's been uh, beating the bush or anything. Uh, but I think we've got to figure out a way to get one or more people to do traffic enforcement, uh, parking enforcement downtown. A lot of discussion around both this table and the planning board uh, is about why aren't people using the parking behind the church. And we've got to do something about encouraging that to free up some space here. Uh, you may or may not be aware the city council authorized a, a, an urban planner to come in and talk to us about the parking garage and, and parking in the downtown area and, and those sorts of things. Um, there's a body of, of belief that the parking garage, $6 million put into the parking garage, is $6 million down a rat hole. Uh, there's another group that thinks putting 8 or $10 million into a new facility is a waste of money. That all has to be, you know, sugared off and, and seen. But something is going to happen. Either the parking garage is going to be improved or a new facility will be built, but in the meantime, and, and once that's the case, I mean, if the parking garage gets fixed, one of the things that's been talked about is assigned parking spaces in there for people who are living down here. Um, so somebody has to enforce that, and I think we ought to get started now so it's not, you know, next Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock, you've <coughs> got to do this. It's we learn, you know, in, in increments, what we need to do, what days of the week. When I was the chief, I had a guy in a parking garage walking around at seven in the morning 
and another one walking around at four to six at night because that's when uh, the employees, mostly female employees, arrived in the parking garage or left. And <coughs> on Thursday nights, I had a person in there at eight o'clock or whatever it was to nine o'clock because Thursday night was the state late night. The problem then was kids who went in there and raised hell and scared the bejeepers out of these gals who were working downtown. And we had to respond to that. <coughs> Excuse me. This is that sort of situation. We gotta, I think, we need to start addressing those issues. Parking downtown, uh, parking in this parking lot, the, particularly the area that's, that's two hours, I think. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, that may change to one, by the way. Uh, and they may make the parking lot uh, two hours or one hour at some point. So, you know, the city council and the planning board and others are looking at this issue. I think we need to get ahead of it, and I will do whatever I can for you to get you what you need to do this. Um, I'm pretty sure I can sell the equipment part of it fairly easy. Um, and, and, I, and, and the other things, I just need to beat up more people than normal um, to get it done. But, and, I, and I ask you and the chief, and the chief's not shy about talking to me, uh, but I ask you if you have concerns or questions or things you'd like me to do, for gosh sakes, you know, my phone number's available. <laughs> he has it if you can't find it. Uh, and and I, if you need a cup of coffee and a talk, I can do that. I just, I, I, I don't think you need to be told I'm proud of Laconia mm -hmm. PD. I think it's a great organization. I want to see it even better. Um, I think it has all the makings of doing what the city of Laconia needs done, <clears throat> unlike a lot of other jurisdictions. I mean, this kid that was just standing here, that's amazing. It really is. I, I, you can, I'm, the only, my only disappointment, I'm sitting over here thinking you only asked for two more men, should have asked for five or six. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could have got them. Uh, but, but the thing, damn it all, here's Laconia, New Hampshire. According to the census, 16,000 people, I'm telling you it's more than that. A neighbor of mine on, on Pickle Pond Road said, <laughs> I didn't fill that crap out. I got better things to do. And he didn't put in anything for census. I think there's others in the city who did the same thing. And I think the population is higher than 16 or even 17,000. That being the case, I can't prove that. Uh, but I think we're growing, and I think we need to keep them, and as a consequence, you, ahead of that curve. And I think for a town this size, to produce that program supported by that street cop speaks wonders about, about Laconia. And uh, I'm sorry to sit here and pontificate like I really am. You know, my wife says to me, he's heard me say this, my wife says to me, you know, Bruce, when you're talking to people, what you need to do is look at their eyes. I said, what? She said, when they start to glaze over, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to yeah, shut up. I got a question. Uh, certainly. Did uh, they ever think about when, on the parking garage of, of uh, having a fee to pack? Uh, there is discussion about that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the question becomes, do you want to stop people from using it because they have to pay a fee when they can come over here essentially <laughs> and park yeah. for nothing? Yeah. So we got to, that's what we're hoping to talk to this ur urban planner about, that and a lot of other things. Um, there was a rush to get the parking garage approved uh, and the mayor, to his credit, and I don't always agree with him about everything, but to his credit, he said, wait a minute, let's slow down and, and, and look at this and make sure we're doing the right thing. I support him 100% in that. And so fees are certainly one of the things. And whether or not we lease out spaces to people, you know, you got, I think it's 18 or 19 spaces that went with the colonial block. Uh, the original ones were right behind uh, Wayfarer, 
uh, eight spaces right behind Wayfair. Those have now been moved to the back row. And then there were nine spaces out here in the front row. We moved them down beside the uh, uh, post office, closer to the old PD end. Um, but my point is, I, <laughs> glazing it over, uh, my point is we're looking at the fact that more housing may start to show up downtown. From what I've read, uh, having been assigned to the planning board, I started reading that stuff, around the country, urban living has started to come back. People are starting to say, yeah, I, I just assume, I'd rather walk to get my newspaper and a cup of coffee. And there's certainly enough places down there the old Masonic building and, and some of those buildings to put in apartments galore. There's what, eight or nine going in with the Colonial, and those are luxury apartments. I don't think we classify them as that, but that, I've seen the plans. They're pretty deluxe. Um, so, so we need, <laughs> short, long answer to your short question, we need to look at whether people should pay, how much they should pay, you know, and, and whether we should, you know, assign parking for people who live down, all that sort of stuff. Well, when I was I thinking, think. when I said that, I was thinking about maintenance and uh, also having somebody there 24-7 yep. to yep. go for yep. stuff and the facility guard and stuff like that. And, and getting back to my original discussion about the chief and I talking about buying some equipment to work, um, uh, there has been some discussion about Main Street being metered again with those damn things that you go and you pay and it's not like a meter like it was when we were all yeah. young folks. Uh, I I take the train out of Dover when I go into Boston. I had an ear infection. I had to go to Boston Eye and Ear for, for a bit there and I take the train out of Dover to Boston and it's one of those you got to put your credit card in and pick the number of the space <laughs> you're in. Four hours and 20 minutes later, I'm still pressing <laughs> buttons and trying to figure out if I'm okay. I think my credit card said $261 for four hours because I'd repeated it so much. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it's uh, so that's being considered, yeah. parking on the main street. Because I so, was thinking that people that are going to come to the theater do you? probably would want to park in that garage, and, they, and there would be no... Uh, yep, they wouldn't think the second thought about paying. But between now and the time where we get, uh, where we get uh, someone assigned there, assuming they were, I think the PD has to be cognizant yeah. of. Yeah. I ought to have a car swing there, yeah. you know, park at the ramp, uh, so people see us, whatever, uh, and so kids don't get up in there and raise hell. Um, and the, uh, I, the other thing I wanted to <coughs> mention was. Um, I've heard comments recently that enforce, uh, not enforcement, uh, the appearance of officers downtown has increased and people are happy about that. The one thing I've heard, and I know I've talked to the chief about this and I'm sure he's gonna shudder when I say it, but I think you need to ask the cops who are walking to wear their hats. When you look up Main Street, if a guy isn't wearing a hat, he looks like everybody else on the street. But you look the length of Main Street and see a guy with a hat on, you know it's a cop. So if you can work that into the plan, I, like I said, I, I know the chief's horrified I even showed up today, but um, <laughs> but, but in all sincerity. Uh, that visibility. Yeah. Well, it's it's right in line with that visibility of my saying, get cruisers out there making car stops. I don't care if you never give out a, a, a summons. I really don't. It's not the summons the state gets that money. The courts start giving us back the money, it might be different, but right now it all goes to the state, so just turn the lights on so people know we're here. We, that's an editorial we, uh, know that we're here. And the same thing with, with walking downtown, the visibility. I, I'd, I'd like to see them park their car there and walk. You know, in the old days, as you'll recall, guys left the PD and walked across the street those days are gone, so have them take a car. There's got to be some piece of iron there they can bring over and let people see it, you know, and let them see him by putting their hat on. Sorry, Chief. Got it. 
<laughs> Any other questions? What's the, uh, what's the equipment? It's uh, automated parking enforcement, so it's basically a, uh, it's a handheld like PDF device that you take a picture of the, the vehicle and it logs the time. So then you can come back and, and issue the ticket and then it prints out the ticket um, to be put on the windshield. It's, it, it is pretty ex expensive. Here's the interesting part that he told me was in the course of taking the picture, you make sure you get the stem of the tire. So an hour later you can say, because you know, nine out of 10 people I ever gave parking tickets to for over parking would say, I left and came back. Hmm. We'd say, well, a chalk mark says, can't do that anymore. So you gotta line the stem of the tire up with the ground someplace and say, it hasn't moved. So there was a court ruling saying that you can't chalk tires anymore because it's a <coughs> constitutional violation of a, it's like a Fourth Amendment search and seizure because you touched their vehicle and put <coughs> chalk on the tire, even though it washes off. Um, so we can't do that anymore. So the only thing we can do is you write down plate numbers <coughs> and then come back and, and see if those same plate numbers are there. But there is that possibility that they left and came back, you know, so. It, it ain't cheap. But I, you know, I, if somehow it, it makes it difficult for you guys budget-wise, I'll try to push it through as a, what is it? CIP or CIP. Yeah, CIP, uh, uh, Capital Improvement Project. And we might be able to do something year-end, too. Our and if we trend it under, under a little bit right now, so. Well, and if you can, for one piece of equipment, maybe I can get you a second one. Yep. Because one, if it breaks down or whatever, uh, I should get you a second and probably a third to try and keep it going. I would ask you to look at the idea of how do we get a body to do that. Yes, you can have an officer walking a good part of the time, and I think that'll help. But, you know, if he gets he, she, or he or she gets called away uh, for, to support another officer or whatever, we probably ought to have somebody downtown that, that does parking enforcement. And how you get there, I'll work with the chief. I, I presume it's your guidance on, on how you'd like us to, to move forward with that. Thank you, and thank you for your support. Thank uh, you. Thank you. you. You know you have my support. <laughs> yep, thanks. Any other citizens wish to speak? Okay. Nobody else, I guess. <laughs> well, we'll ask them not to wash the tires. <laughs> uh, confirmation of the next meeting date, February 16th. Okay. And there is a need for non public, so I will entertain. A motion to go into non-public. I'll make a motion to go into non-public pursuant to RSA 91-A colon 3 numeral 2A for the dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee, the disciplining of such employee, or the investigation of any charges against him or her, unless the employee affected one has the right to a meeting, and two request that the meeting be open, in which case the request shall be granted. Is there a second? Second it. On the motion made by Commissioner Davis, seconded by Commissioner Mello. Uh, all in favor by, by a roll, by a uh, verbal vote. Uh, Commissioner Mello? Here. Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Woodham? Yes. It passes unanimously, and the commission entered into non public at 3.55 p.m. Thanks, Councilor.